welcome students we are in process of understanding the relation between various parameters as part of discussion on non resonant that means the smooth dependence of cross section on energy that to reactions are induced by charged particles so please ignore the involvement of neutrons and photons that means gamma rays as projectiles okay so i am confining the discussion only on the charged particle induced reactions what did we learn in the previous lecture so let me start with the slide with which i have ended the previous lecture okay so here we have seen the dependence of centroid of the gamma peak okay on the charge of target and projectile and except at very high temperature like 10 giga kelvin energy is always less than the coulomb barrier and the reaction is not classically happening but it is because quantum mechanically via tunneling process and this is the formula to calculate the most effective energy at which nuclear reactions are taking place in the stars all right so now we need to answer some more questions okay for that let me show you another diagram at a specific temperature okay less than the coulomb barrier corresponding temperature 0.03 giga kelvin that means 30 mega kelvins how the probability is changing with respect to the energy you can see all these are gamma peaks in logarithmic scales okay this shows that because of the increase in target and projectile charges you see here projectile charge is increasing from proton to alpha okay and target charge is also increasing from proton to carbon 12 so when there is a increase in the charges of target and projectile the gamma peak is shifting towards higher energies you see the gamma peak for p plus p 5.9 kev for proton plus c12 it's about uh, uh, less than 50 kev and for carbon 12 plus alpha it's around 0.1 mev so the gamma peak centroid is shifting to higher energies because of the increase in the target and projectile charges number 2 the area under the curves decreases rapidly so do you remember one of the previous questions which i have listed in the previous lecture how the area of the gamma peak changes with the charges of the target and projectile which of course it decides further the coulomb barrier so please do not get confused to relate all these parameters so in this slide i am showing you the relation between the gamma peak and the charges of target and projectile and also the impact on the area of the gamma peak which is decreasing rapidly as the coulomb barrier is increasing which is increasing because of the increase in charges of target and projectile so the area is decreasing means what the probability for the reactions to happen is also coming down the product of probability and the energy okay now in a mixture for example you consider a scenario where different nuclei in are present in a mixture in the stellar plasma at a particular time now how we can understand the burning process what kind of nuclear reactions will take place whatever reactions with the smallest coulomb barrier are there they contribute to the most of the nuclear energy production why it is so because for nuclear reactions with least coulomb barrier centroid of the gamma peak is also less so as a first step those nuclei having less charges and the combination of nuclei participating in the nuclear reaction with the smallest coulomb barrier are responsible for the major production in the energy production of stars so this is a very significant statement you need to understand from this diagram okay uh, not only that more rapid consumption also takes place with this nuclei not only most of the nuclear energy production but also rapid consumption of the nuclei also take place 
at this stage where nuclei, re nuclear reactions with the smallest coulomb barrier are happening within the star. Okay? Now, as I have told you earlier, this gamma peak is almost close to the Gaussian function. Now, let me approximate the peak with a Gaussian function. Okay? The, let me approximate the gamma peak with a Gaussian function. Then how it looks like mathematically. So, e to the power of minus 2 pi eta minus e by k t. Okay? This is nothing but minus 2 pi eta and minus e by k t. These two terms were always present in the integrand of the reaction rate formula which I have represented, which I have presented in the previous lecture. Okay? Here, the moment I represent the gamma peak with Gaussian function, okay, I can always write down around E naught, around E naught, I am approximating this. So, in terms of kt and E naught, I can approximate this expression. So, there is a slight difference in the curvature, but we are assuming at the same centroid, but at the same curvature, we are approximating the gamma peak with the Gaussian function. What is the advantage of this? It will be clear to you very soon. I am separating the terms as following e to the power of minus 3 e naught by k t and e to the power of some term. All right? I am separating two terms, uh, the expression of integrand in the reaction rate equation. All right? Now, this is I max. What is I max, my dear? In the gamma peak, what is the value corresponding to the centroid of the gamma peak? the corresponding value on the y axis is the maximum intensity of the peak. That maximum intensity of the peak is represented mathematically by e to the power of minus 3 e naught by k t. All right? And remaining term you have here. Here you can see the expression for the width. All right? This is the width of the Gaussian peak basically. Now, how I can tabulate the I max values for different types of nuclear reactions starting from low charges of target and projectile and high charges of target and projectile. You can see the I max is decreasing from minus 6 to minus 239. So, the maximum intensity of the gamma peak is very much sensitive to E naught also which further depends on the Coulomb barrier. So, this data again reflects the fact that Coulomb barrier plays a very important role. Okay? So, here we can give some general statements regarding the burning stages within the stars. How? As I said earlier, the consumption of those nuclei with the lowest Coulomb barrier takes place first. All right? Once the consumption is over, okay? once all the nuclei with the lowest Coulomb barrier are consumed, then what will happen? the gravitational contraction take place between the remaining nuclei until the temperature rises to initiate the burning of those nuclei with second least Coulomb barrier. Hope you are following what I am trying to convey. You have a set of nuclei in that those nuclei with the smallest Coulomb barrier will consume first, then gravitational contraction takes place until the temperature rises which is sufficient to ignite, to initiate nuclei with second least Coulomb barrier, those nuclei will start undergoing reaction with each other, which are responsible for the energy production at that stage and also nucleosynthesis. Okay? This energy liberated in the nuclear reactions having second least Coulomb barrier stabilizes the star against further contraction. This gravitational contraction is taking place continuously, but the moment is temperature is sufficient to ignite second set of burning, that energy liberated in the nuclear in those nuclear reactions will stabilize the star and stops the star in, uh, for contracting further because of the gravitational interaction. So, the relation between the stabilization and the gravitational contraction because of the nuclear reaction has to be very clear to you. Okay? And the these well defined epochs as different burning stages. Do you recollect what are these different burning stages? Hydrogen burning, helium burning, carbon burning, then silicon burning, S process, R process, all these burning stages, the underlying mechanism is the same thing. The Coulomb barrier is playing extremely important role here. Okay? 
So, the reaction rates are extremely sensitive to the Coulomb barrier. Reaction rates are extremely sensitive to the Coulomb barrier. Now, the second question, we have found out the, the centroid of the peak by taking the first derivative. Now, in this previous slide, you take the second derivative of this and you take the second derivative of this and equate each other, then you can get an expression for the peak width delta. So, our aim is to find out relation for gamma peak width. Okay? It is 4 by square root of 3, then square root of E naught k t, E naught k t. Numerically, you can find out the value by knowing the reduced mass Z1, Z2 and temperature in mega kelvins and finally, the peak width is K e v. So, now we are in a position to calculate the centroid of the gamma peak and the width of the gamma peak. What is the relation between these two? Can any time the peak width be less than the E naught or greater than E naught? That we have to understand. Fine. Remember, the peak width is always less than the centroid because this peak width is having terms E naught and K t, E naught and K t. And already I have explained you, K t is always less than E naught in charged particle induced non-resonant reactions. So, because K t is much less than E naught, of course, delta that is peak width will be less than E naught from this expression of square root of E naught K t. Okay? So, peak width, however, with Coulomb barrier, it increases with Coulomb barrier. Earlier, I have shown you the diagram where with increase in Coulomb barrier, the width of the peak is increasing, though area is decreasing. Okay? Now, the majority of the reactions occur over an energy window. E naught minus delta by 2 to E naught plus delta by 2. Okay? So, if this is the gamma peak, so this is the E naught okay? and this is the delta okay? and this is delta by 2 and this is delta by 2. So, between the E naught minus delta by 2 and E naught plus delta by 2, in this particular range, majority of the nuclear reactions taking place. So, you might have realized the importance of this gamma peak and also peak width. Okay? Now, this window is too low for direct measurements. Many a times, the energy range, the peak width is too low for direct measurements to carry out. That is the reason researchers carry out nuclear reactions at available energies, then do the extrapolation. And when you do the extrapolation, it is always preferable to extrapolate the S factor and then you find out the cross section. Because the probability of getting uncertainty is less when you extrapolate S factor because of its less energy dependence on, okay, compared to cross section dependence on energy. Okay? All right. So, let me show you some data regarding the variation of gamma peak width with temperature, variation of gamma peak with temperature. This is induced by protons and this set of reactions is induced by alpha, okay? induced by alpha. You see the charge is increased and you can see that with a decrease in temperature, gamma peak width is also decreasing and also this is sensitive to the charges of toroidal projectile. All right. So, with increase in charges of toroidal projectile, say from proton plus proton, lithium, carbon, neon, cal calcium and ruthenium, you see the window is shifting to higher energies and becomes broader. The window is becoming broader and it is shifting towards the higher energies. So, the shifting towards left or right depending on various parameters, this relation is extremely important to understand and to get convinced yourself. Okay? I hope these diagrams are helping you. Now, the most important relation that we are looking for. If you remember, I have started the discussion on non-resonant reactions induced by charged particles by showing the reaction rate equation and highlighting the fact that temperature of the star is changing very frequently and each and every temperature gives rise to a different value to the reaction rate. And when you are dealing with large number of nuclear reactions within the stars, it is not possible, I mean it is very time taking process to calculate the reaction rate at all these temperatures. And that is the reason that motivated us 
to come up with an analytical expression for reaction rate on temperature. After discussing the concepts of centroid of the gamma peak, width of the gamma peak, maximum intensity of the gamma peak, now the time has come to come up with an analytical expression for temperature dependent nuclear reaction rate. How do we do it? Let us see. Please replace the gamma peak with a Gaussian for better approximation. Then this is a well known formula for the reaction rate, okay, very standard formula where I have taken S at E naught as a constant. Okay. S of E is equal to S of E naught as constant. This is another assumption. So, by now how many assumptions we have done? One, the gamma peak has been assumed to be exact Gaussian function. Number two, S factor is not at all changing with the energy. For simplicity, for the sake of convenience, we have started with these two assumptions. Do not forget practically corrections corresponding to these two assumptions have to be done. Whether there will be a change or not, that is a different thing, fine. But at this stage, it is sufficient to, I mean it makes sense to take these two assumptions. First assumption, gamma peak assuming as a perfect Gaussian function. Second, constant value of the S, so that we can take S factor outside the integrand. Take the S factor outside the integrand, okay. So, you see earlier S was inside, okay, is not it? Now, I have taken it outside because S is a constant. Now, the only thing remaining is e to the power of minus 2 pi eta and e to the power of minus e by kt, k by k, e by kt and the product of these two term gave rise to gamma peak as I had discussed earlier. Okay. Now, this formula we are taking help from to come up with analytical expression of rate and temperature relation. Okay. Okay, so, S naught is as it is, these two are as it is. Now, the product has been represented as I max taken outside and earlier previous slide has shown this expression right, which has this peak width formula. So, this is inside the integrand. Now, without introducing any new value, I can always replace this lower limit to minus infinity. You can always check yourself. So, the value of integrand will not change if I replace 0 to minus infinity, but it makes my job easier to evaluate the integral. Okay. So, it will be delta into root pi divided by 2. This is the value of the integrand, value of the integrand. All right. So, you use this value and come up with the final expression for reaction rate and assume the S factor is a constant. The reaction rate square root of 2 by mu, this is a constant, this is a constant, this is a peak width, k t is a constant at a particular temperature. S is also constant e to the power of minus 3 e naught. Here lies temperature here and temperature here. So, slowly our job is becoming easy to come up with a relation for temperature dependent nuclear reaction rate. Okay. Now, let us use the expressions for e naught and delta which we are aware of and come up with a numerical expression for reaction rate. This is a constant reduced mass charges of targeting projectile, this is a constant value. Tau is something which you are aware of that is 3 e to the power of 3 e naught my k t. Okay. So, basically here tau is equal to 3 e naught by k t. So, the i max earlier whatever I have written, it is basically e to the power of minus tau. Okay. So, this tau is containing the term 3 e naught by k t. All right. Now, this S naught is in the units of units of KU in bonds and mu is in AMU as usual. So, from this you can say that reaction rate is proportional to tau square e to the power of minus tau and using some mathematics which I am not discussing here, I strongly suggest you to do yourself. Using some power law or mathematical I mean concepts, you can derive the relation between reaction rate and the temperature, where tau already have told you 3 e naught by k into t. All right. Now, let me give you some important numbers. 
for the same set of reactions starting from lowest coulomb barrier to highest coulomb barrier of course for starting from z is equal to 1 to 16 i think this is sufficient to get an idea the reaction rate you see temperature to the power of 3.9 okay and varying up to 182 please see the values of coulomb barrier almost 1 kV to 14 kV only but you see the temperature dependence 4 is in the power and 182 you can see the dramatic change in the reaction rate with small change in the temperature okay which depends on the coulomb barrier finally so how coulomb barrier temperature and reactions are reaction rates are related to each other this should help you to have a clear idea so you can this data reflects the high sensitivity of reaction rate with temperature and also with coulomb barrier with coulomb barrier now when it is clear that the reaction rate is highly sensitive to the temperature and of course on coulomb barrier there must be a mechanism for the stabilization of a star now we are into the actual part of nuclear astrophysics for star to be stable for millions and billions of years there has to be a mechanism considering the fact that temperature is an extremely sensitive i mean temperature is playing an extremely crucial role in deciding the reaction rate which is further deciding the energy produced from the stars and also the synthesis of elements if there is no i mean specific mechanism to stabilize the star there is no other way for the star i mean there is no way for the star to explode i mean the, i mean star has to explode there is no other way fine so this tells us various beautiful mechanisms happening within the star which are trying to stabilize for a long time okay so the temperature dependent reaction rate mathematical expression must be clear to you fine now after this as i said ideally you need to include two corrections what are those gaussian peak from symmetric to slightly asymmetric and energy dependence of the s factor see the analytical expression which i have derived clearly assumed the s value as a constant but there is always some change in the s factor with respect to energy that has to be taken into account though that change is less when compared to the change in the cross section and also the asymmetric nature of the integrand of reaction rate which is little bit away from the actual gaussian function also to be considered okay next i am going to discuss one very interesting feature of the nuclear astrophysics within the stars it is the nucleus which is undergoing reaction with another nucleus electrons are not present uh, surrounding the nucleus but whereas in the laboratory when projectile is reacting with the target target is full of atoms so you have electron cloud surrounding the nucleus till now whatever we have done we have assumed it is a bare nucleus it is the bare nucleus so for better understanding let me draw one interesting diagram okay to understand the effect of electron screening so it is basically distance r on x axis and coulomb potential on y axis okay so this is the energy of the projectile and say this is the coulomb barrier and this is one type of potential and this dotted one is the bare nucleus till now we have been considering you see it never reaches to zero but it comes to close to zero okay now the incident projectile is coming with some energy say e okay this is the projectile and the point at which it is touching the bare nucleus potential is say classical turning point rc and this is the electron cloud in the atom okay this is atomic radius you can say and this is a nuclear radius so this is a bare nucleus and this is the shielded nucleus shielded nucleus so we have considered a bare nucleus that means coulomb interactions with electrons is negligible but in laboratory when you do the experiment tag target nuclei they are in the form of atoms which have 
electrons surrounding the nucleus. So, the cloud of electrons act as a screening potential. The net effect of this electron cloud presence is to reduce the Coulomb barrier little bit. So, the moment Coulomb barrier comes down, cross section will increase. So, this enhancement in the cross section because of the electron screening effect, is it significant or not that we will discuss. Okay? So, you see the total potential goes to 0 outside the atomic radius. Fine, from this diagram it is clear. And because of this, the projectile sees a redu reduction in the Coulomb barrier. Now, the electrostatic potential less than the atomic radius is almost constant from this formula it is clear. right? So, the total potential is can be calculated as Z1 E by R minus this constant potential. So, this gives rise to effective height of the Coulomb barrier which contains R n and R a. Okay? So, the effect is basically equivalent to the ratio of R n and R a which is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 5. All right? Now, it is clear that shielding correction is quite negligible, but it becomes significant when classical turning point is near or outside atomic radius. If R c is within the atomic radius, it does not matter. But if it is outside the atomic radius, sometimes it becomes significant. Okay? Let us try to understand this. Because we know that this expression for E is in terms of classical turning point is this expression. The condition that R c okay, for bare nucleus classical turning point is greater than or equal to atomic radius can be written as like this. Energy is less than some potential given by this expression, where we have R a using this condition. Okay? Now, this penetration through a shielded Coulomb potential having a projectile energy E s, assume it is E s, it is equivalent to penetration through a bare nucleus at energy which is a sum of E s and also this U e which I have defined here. So, please listen to this and understand carefully. And because of this using the well known formula of you know e to power of minus 2 pi eta Okay, and S factor divided by energy that well known formula, the enhancement in the cross section can be taken as a ratio of sigma at E and sigma at E s. For example, if you take the P plus P reaction, the ratio is 33 percent for 1 keV and 2.3 percent for 5 keV and as you increase the E s value, the ratio is becomes very less. So, we know that gamma peak window lies at higher energies when compared to this uh, values of E s. That is why we can always ignore the shielding correction and the lab measurements can be considered as if they are happening for the bare nuclei. So, this is an important statement we need to understand. Electron screening in principle can be neglected based on this logical arguments. However, at very high stellar density in stars where nuclei are sur surrounded with uh, large number of electrons. Okay? Clusters of electrons are there with uh, surrounding the nuclei, then it can see the impact of electron screening on the cross section, provided the density is very high. Okay? And the positive point is that because of the electrons presence uh, surrounding the nuclei, the penetration will become relatively easier and cross section will become high. Okay? And for shielded and for bare, how the reaction rates are represented by taking the by linking with some factor f, where the f varies between 1 and 2 and this is higher for higher density. Okay? So, to summarize today's lecture, what I have discussed, how to calculate the peak width, how the centroid peak width depends on temperature and also the area of the peak and the temperature dependent reaction rate I have derived. Hope it is clear to you the analytical expression. Okay? And then I have discussed one important effect in nuclear astrophysics that is electron screening effect, which happens because of the presence of electrons surrounding the nucleus leading to the reduction in the cross section, sorry reduction in the Coulomb barrier increasing the value of the cross section. So, in the next lecture, I will discuss non resonant reaction induced by neutrons. Okay? See you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.